What is up, everybody? Solomon here. I hope you guys are all having an okay day. Tons of information to get into today. We essentially have uh, EVM or Ethereum virtual virtual machine compatibility with uh, side chains on the XRP Ledger live, uh, at least in the dev aspect, dev mode, they're live. Um, we also have Swift essentially removing all of the public updates from their knowledge portal. Um, I'm just going to kind of hop right in because there's just tons of information. I'm going to be talking about Quant a little bit too, some interesting Ripple partnerships and some Alliance Block news, which we haven't talked about Alliance Block in a while. Uh, but So we do this adoption route through, uh, review through Genfinity, or these are the ones that I did for the first three months. And when I say updates through Swift's website, I'm talking about uh, there's a knowledge portal that always would have release updates on there. Now, this is how I was able to find ISO 24165, adding support for non-deliverable trades and digital currencies. So through these uh, digital token identifiers, ISO 24165, this was, I found it through the updates on Swift, as, and this goes live in November, as well as blockchain wallets in November. They were constantly pushing out updates. They usually would come out like three or four times a month. What has occurred, though, is they've moved all of the updates to a portion of this site, and they've revamped their whole site just over the past two or three weeks. Uh, they moved the, the updates to a portion called Release Timeline. Well, guess what? It appears that you need Swift credentials now to see updates for release timelines through Swift. Um, I'm going to keep diving into this and see if there's a way around it. But yeah, very, very interesting that they have blockchain wallets and ISO 24165, aka crypto assets, being integrated into the platform in November. And they just so happen to revamp their entire site and remove the updates portion from their knowledge portal, which used to be, just so you guys know... It would be in the Knowledge Center, and it was right over here. But not there anymore. Curious timing, right? Now, I came across this to BNY Mellon, largest crypto custodian bank, launches payments into China. Now, this deals with Ripple and BNY Mellon as well. Um, and we can see here, this is Bank XRP. There was a proof of concept all the way back in 2016 with RippleNet, uh, with BNY Mellon. But I think this is very interesting. So... BNY Mellon has pulled off a, a first ever payment transaction from Egypt to China, partnering with a couple of organizations here. QNB, All Ali Egypt, uh, the bank that sent the funds, and Shanghai Pudong Development Bank in China that received them. So, Crypto Custodian Bank launches payments into China, and we can look at some of the previous information here. Pudong, uh, Shanghai Pudong Development Bank, this is your XRP Arcade and Lionel and some of the great work that he's facilitated uh, Shanghai Pudong Development Bank definitely had some sort of an initiative with Ripple and they've removed it from their site. But we do know that all Ali and QNB, both uh, Ripple, both RippleNet. Uh, February 2020, uh, Al Ali Bank signs agreement with Ripple for remittance and payments. QNB was October 4th, 2021, enhanced cr uh, global cross border payments. So, not definitively, we don't have uh, facts in here, but. You know, there's there's some interesting relationships there for sure. Um, also, Quant has been on quite the tear. And this is one of the reasons we should be looking at, you know, how much these things are running in a bear market. This isn't to say Quant can't go higher than where it's at right now. But breaking above all-time high with Bitcoin, you have to even just, you know, I know a lot of people think charting is nonsensical. But if you go back in history here, this is on the weekly chart versus Bitcoin. This is the RSI. Essentially, this is going to tell you overbought or oversold conditions. On the weekly chart, we touched this uh, 84 level, about 84.85, once, twice, three times, and then just now too. And what do we see? We see a massive sell wick with uh, resistance, resistance right here after we break out of all-time high. I would hope that we would have some sort of healthy consolidation because a type of a move like this from June of 2022 to today, I mean, essentially going up 246810 at the peak 12, so a 6x. Uh, in a bear market is pretty ridiculous against Bitcoin. So hoping for a little bit of consolidation, um, et cetera, et cetera. Within that, Quant still at 199 um, It capitulated down to like $40 in June. So yeah, I mean, a 500% gain is pretty ridiculous, right? Or 600% gain is pretty ridiculous. So 
Uh, Goldman Sachs. Commodities market could enter blockchain according to new industry initiative. I'm sorry, gold commodities market could enter the blockchain according to new industry initiative. This is the World Gold Council essentially talking about partnering with this group called Exedrus Group and making gold trading more accessible and streamlined. Well, Exedrus Group, again, Bank XRP, like a legend in this space, obviously been here forever, um, talking about them signing a contract with R3 to use Quarter Enterprise Solution to build a bullion Integrity Ledger. Just found that a little bit interesting as well. Now, the big news coming out today, at least in my opinion, is you know, for out of Ripple X, introducing the first phase of bringing an Ethereum virtual machine or EVM sidechain to the XRP Ledger. Uh, Ethereum virtual machine developers, we invite you to experiment with the functionality on DevNet and enjoy the best of Ethereum and the XRP Ledger for your DeFi applications. Here's the whole article here. Uh, and the timeline is is what I want to focus on here. So the roadmap ahead, the first phase of the EVM sidechain is currently available for testing on the XRPL DevNet. So that's live. Using a bridge, developers can test the exchange of DevNet XRP between the Ethereum virtual machine, machine sidechain and the XRP Ledger 2. Number one, access available technologies. And number two, deploy their existing Solidity apps on the Ethereum virtual machine sidechain and access the XRPL DevNet user base. Phase two is on track for early 2023, which will feature a permissionless Ethereum virtual machine sidechain and a bridge with a unique design that connects to the XRP Ledger DevNet to expand participation and test scalability within a controlled environment. The end goal with all of this is phase three, a permissionless Ethereum virtual mach machine sidechain and bridge available on the XRP Ledger mainnet slated to follow. That's very interesting because not only talking about a side chain, talking about the XRP Ledger mainnet, so the actual XRP Ledger integrating with Ethereum Virtual Machine, which I think is the first time we've actually heard this because federated side chains we know are coming. That's essentially like me literally starting my own blockchain with a snapshot of where the XRP Ledger's at, having that snapshot of the XRP Ledger and integrating whatever I want to on top of that. But Ethereum virtual machine compatibility, uh, compatibility on top of the XRP Ledger mainnet is very, very interesting. Um, who knows how long that would take to actually flush out because you would need the votes. Uh, you would need at least the 80% uh, eighty percent threshold, right? Um, throughout all three phases, the Ethereum virtual machine sidechain will feature block and finality times comparable to the XRP Ledger mainnet and support Ethereum smart contracts and applications. Another big one like MetaMask, Remix, and Truffle. How huge would it be to have your XRP uh, you know, operating through MetaMask as well? Because that's what we see with all these other EVM chains, right? Or EVM compatible chains. Um, massive. Now, I found this graphic to be very curious as well. Bridging the best between both worlds. XRPL EVM bridge. Now, right now they're calling uh, the... The sidechain XRP that is interoperating with an EVM on DevNet, EXRP for EVM, I'm sure. But if you look down here into the bullet points, Ethermint and Evmos client or Evmos client. Um, I started looking into Ethermint and Evmos and Evmos is tied into Cosmos. I believe this is the same Evmos. The new frontier, bringing the world of Ethereum based applications and assets to interoperable networks of the Cosmos ecosystem. So Cosmos is Atom. Um, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong down here. Maybe there's another Cosmos ecosystem that I'm not thinking of right now. But Cosmos is, you know, obviously a blockchain. Atom is the native digital asset, which I don't know if there's ties within any of that or not. And Ethermint as well. We see another Cosmos reference right here. So things to pay attention to within that. If you're not aware of what the Ethereum virtual machine is and how it works, I mean, you can even look at... Um, networks like Hedera Hashraft that are inter integrating with um, not only smart contracts as a service, but EVM compatibility. Um, there's certainly talk about integrating Hedera and HBAR into MetaMask right now, and that would certainly be done uh, through tying the network into the Ethereum virtual machine. Um, and there's countless of EVM compatible networks right now. Here's a full list. I'll post both of these for you guys. Um, Zinfin, uh, Ubic, Phantom. Energy web, you know, you can run, kind of run the gamut here. There's tons and tons and tons. So 
Massive news, not only from the sidechain standpoint, um, launching EVM on DevNet for testing, and then phase two would be scaling, but phase three bringing EVM compatibility onto the XRP Ledger mainnet. That's massive, and I don't think we've ever heard that yet. I know I certainly haven't. I've heard about it being integrated into federated sidechains, never heard about it being integrated into the actual XRP Ledger. But that is apparently what the goal is going to be over time. And to me, that is, I mean, it's just kind of a, it's a ridiculously large use case. I'm curious what that would actually do, um, or maybe it wouldn't do anything um, to consensus based, you know, con consensus mechanisms on the ledger itself. So uh, from a speed and utility standpoint, but all right, Koreans to have access to blockchain powered digital IDs by 2024. We've talked about this so many times, Digi digitization. Digital ID, digital sovereignty, uh, green initiatives are coming obviously by 2030, but South Korea could soon allow its citizens to use blockchain-based digital identification instead of physical cards as soon as 2024. It looks like this would be going through mobile phones. Um, and Korea sees an economic value of these digital IDs at around 3% of their gross domestic product, which is pretty big, right? Government to allow smartphones to replace existing ID cards. All right. Last but not least, there was a massive announcement coming out from Alliance Block uh, a few days ago. This is Alliance Block becoming INAPA, which is the International Association for Trusted Blockchain Applications Advisory Board Member for Better Blockchain Policy and Regulation. These uh, industry consortiums are certainly something not to scoff at and to very much so pay attention to because these are a lot of the working groups that are providing solutions uh, for governments, for banks, for agencies across the board. You can look down into some of the members of the working group of ANAPA right now. You've got One Inch, you've got Ave, you've got Eternity, Accenture, which should ring a bell to a lot of people, Algorand, Alliance Block, Tendermint, um, Binance is in here, Boris Stugart is in here, Cardano is in here, Cargo X, Climate Chain Coalition. I mean, you can kind of see how large this is, Coinbase. But yeah, Fujitsu. So Fireblocks, wow. Um, so yeah, congratulations to Alliance Block. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Man, uh, Ethereum virtual machine compatibility on mainnet within the XRPL over time being the end game is really kind of a ridiculous proposition that I even missed it whenever I read through that article the first time today. Um, but that's gigantic. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will talk to you when I talk to you. Thanks, bye.